Hello you beautiful, beautiful people, welcome back to Forza Horizon 4, welcome back to the channel, I hope you are well. Today we're jumping on the G920, the steering wheel and pedal setup for Forza Horizon 4. We'll be checking out the settings and driving a couple of cars, so if you are new around here, definitely consider subscribing. A like rating would be much appreciated. Let's jump on the G920. Now first things first and the reason you're all here and that's for the settings for the G920 in Forza Horizon 4. To access the settings menu for the wheel there is an advanced menu that you can use. You want to head into the pause menu, slide on down to the settings tab, head on over to control settings in here, hit RB or the right paddle on your steering wheel to enter wheel settings and then enter advanced. Now in this menu is an absolute minefield of settings and what I have is what works best for me. You can always change these settings to suit your driving style. Now although I have kept some of the default settings, I have tweaked quite a few of them just to make things a little bit easier when driving the G920 in Forza Horizon 4. Without further ado, let's run through the big list of settings and what I use with the G920. Vibration is on, switch gear up and down is off, switch e-brake slash view events is off, switch look back slash camera is off, invert vertical look off, switch Anna, telemetry TTS, I've kept that with Anna. Switch horn slash photo mode is set to off. Now these settings are completely a personal preference. If you want to switch these around, moving buttons, this, that and the other, that is entirely up to you. But for me, I've kept them pretty much default. Moving on to the important stuff then, and everything else from here is going to make your life a lot easier when using the G920. Steering wheel axis dead zone inside to zero, steering wheel axis dead zone outside to 100. Now what these two settings mean for your steering is when you start putting inputs with the wheel, they're going to recognise that straight away. There's going to be no delay when turning the wheel. Now steering linearity, I probably completely butchered that word, but I've got this set to 50. Some people like to have it at 45, but I found 50 works best for me. Acceleration access dead zone inside set to zero. Acceleration access dead zone outside set to 100. This works just the same as the steering axis dead zone inside and outside. As soon as you start putting inputs on that accelerator, they're going to happen almost instantaneously. Deacceleration access dead zone inside set to 10 and deacceleration access dead zone outside set to 100. This is your brake pedal. Now the reason I have deacceleration access dead zone inside set to 10 is I slightly lean on the brake pedal. So if I've got that set to zero, it's going to be slightly applying the brake. So I'm just giving a little bit of leeway if I do accidentally lean on that brake pedal. Clutch access dead zone inside set to 15, just in case you do lean on that clutch pedal, it's not going to affect the car in any kind of way. And the clutch access dead zone outside set to 80, so it's going to kick in pretty much straight away. There's going to be no full travel on the clutch pedal. You can sort of kick it halfway and then you can change gear. E-brake access dead zone inside set to zero, so you can just pop the handbrake, there's no delay in the button. E-brake access dead zone outside 100, again, there's no delay when pressing that button. Vibration scale, this is personal preference. I have mine set to 30. You can higher that if you want, just depends how much vibration you want through the wheel. I might up mine a little bit, just to 40, see how we go from there. But this is always adjustable, it just depends how much vibration you like through the wheel. Force feedback scale, I have mine set to 25. This is how much force you'll feel on the wheel pushing against you when going around corners or oversteering or however the car is reacting to the wheel. Now I find 25 works best for me. Again, you can move this up and down as much as you like, get what feels best for you, but I use 25. Center spring scale, I have mine set to 80. Again, find what's best for you, but I find 80 works best for me. Wheel damper scale, I have mine on 110. Larger values provide a heavier feeling while lower values give a light feeling with no resistance. So this is pretty much in the middle of where that should be. But again, you can move this around, get what's best for you. I have mine set to 110. Force feedback understeer, I have mine set to 80. I like to feel when the car is understeering, sort of the wheel kicks back at me. I can feel when I'm losing grip on the front end. I have that set to 80. Force feedback, minimum force, I have mine set to 80. Wheel rotation angle, I set mine to 540. I've seen a lot of people suggest start at 540 and work your way up. I feel that 900 is way too much. You're turning that wheel 
way too much when trying to get around corners. I find 540 is pretty much the sweet spot, but start at 540 and work your way up. Now, like I say, any of these settings can be slightly tweaked to your personal preference. They're not set in stone. They're just what I use and what I find easier with Forza Horizon 4 and the G920. I will also write down all of these settings in the description below to make it easy for you guys to copy them from this video to your game. Now, I've jumped into a quick race in the R34 Skyline against some unbeatable drive stars just to show you the G920 and these settings in action. Now these settings aren't going to make you the best driver in Horizon 4 on a wheel by any means. What they are going to do is help you keep the car in control. Practice makes perfect and that is the thing and the key with the G920 and the wheel. Practice, practice, practice. Also try and be as smooth as you can with your inputs with the wheel and with the pedals. The smoother you are, the better the results. As you can see, I myself am still learning with the G920 and Forza Horizon 4. I do actually make a couple of mistakes in this race but as always thank you so much for watching if you are new around here definitely consider subscribing if you found these settings helpful a like rating would be much appreciated stay safe and have an awesome day